How many cornerbacks will the Ravens keep on the roster this year? What has a better chance of happening this year? Lamar Jackson winning the MVP or the Ravens winning the Super Bowl? Are the Baltimore Ravens the most underrated team in the AFC? These and many, many more questions on this episode of NFL Questions from subscribers. Yeah, this feels like a dream. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL questions from subscribers, which is a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to, and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of NFL questions from subs, you can send me an email to team, keep it clean at gmail.com and we'll answer your question in a video. Now, uh, team, keep it clean. Thank you. I love you on this episode. Sorry, bad news. It's just going to be me solo. I, I know we're not used to that, but I, my apologies but anyway shout out to everybody that's come on in the past shout out to everybody that will come on in the future we do have more guests coming on so that is something I'm looking forward to uh, I just gotta work out the time frames and all that cuz y'all know my schedule is but anyway I love y'all I appreciate y'all team keep it clean if you want to become a patron you can go to patreon.com slash engraven vids I love y'all, and you know what? Speaking of the patrons, let's start this episode by asking one of the questions directly from the patrons. First question came from my boy, Adam L. He said, how many DBs do you think the Ravens will keep this year? Six? Now we know Marcus Peters, Marlon Humphrey, Tavon Young, Sean Wade, Anthony Averitt, Jimmy Smith are locks, but that leaves Devontae Harris, Eamon Marshall, uh, Khalil Dorsey um, on the bubble. Or do you think that the Ravens may consider trading perhaps Tay-Tay to make some cap space? What are your thoughts? I don't think uh, Tavon Young is going to be traded. Um, I, I do think that, I think even, even if he was on the block, I, I think that teams would be very hesitant to trade for Tavon Young. All the skill in the world, especially as a slot corner, but we know the injury history. So teams will look at that and be like, oh, and he's on a second contract. So they may be like, oh, I don't know. But anyway, um, I think, yeah, Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters, Jimmy Smith, Tavon Young, Sean Wade, uh, Brandon Stevens, um, and Anthony Averitt, too. Oof, that's seven already. That, that's seven already. Oof. And then, uh, that's not even inclu including the safeties, too. So that, that might be it right there. We, we may be done. This part of the conversation may be over. So, yeah. So that's, that's seven. I feel like I missed somebody, though. Oh, he talked about Khalil Dorsey, uh, who stepped in last year. Eamon Marshall, uh, we haven't gotten to see him yet. There was Terrell Bonds, who also stepped in last year. Um, we had a lot of guys. Harris is a safety, so he's on another... Uh, He's in another count uh, with the safety guys, but as far as the corners, yeah, I, I think um, the practice squad, I think they'll keep, they could keep a couple on the practice squad. They could try to keep Terrell Bonds um, and, and uh, Khalil Dorsey on the practice squad because they have that NFL experience uh, and that will be able to keep them around as just in case guys because you know, y'all know we don't got to go down memory lane when it comes to the cornerback position. We've been through it and we don't want to go through it again. Uh, so hopefully we won't have to. Next question, now featuring the microphone this time. You see, we, we've been doing this for years, but still make silly mistakes. Anyway, next question came from my boy KT. He said, Raven, if you could add two former Ravens in their prime, one on offense, one on defense, who would those Ravens be? Me personally, I would do Ed Reed and Jonathan Ogden, and we could put Ronnie Stanley at right tackle. Tell me what you think. God bless and go Ravens. Oh, I like this one. Y'all already know. If you know me, you already, you already know who would be for defense. Ed Reed all day, every day. All day, every day. Um, Ed Reed, to me, he was the best Ravens player ever. 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 Um, Ed Reed was amazing. And I always say that the, the reason that I feel like Ed Reed was the best Ravens player ever was one, obviously because of his impact on the team, but his impact once he left the team too. 
The Ravens have still been looking for that guy at the safety position, at free safety. They've been looking, searching for a long time, and they still have not been able to do it yet. They ain't been able to find it yet. And they continue that search. Um, so I would say Ed Reed. And that's obviously not a shot at Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis was, that dude was a monster too. He was a monster too. Um, but, it, and, and it's like, it's like Ed Reed is one and Ray Lewis is 9.9. Well, 0 0.9. Cause then, anyway, Ray Lewis, he's right there. They both neck and neck. And depending on your, what you like, some people will put Ray Lewis. And you can understand why, obviously. But my guy, I would pick Ed Reed. Um, because right now, there's still question marks at the safety position. But he would give us that guy as safety. Somebody that could be a game changer. Y'all remember the games where us as Ravens fans were heading into a game? We would look forward to our defense being out there more than our offense. That's why 2014 was so weird. It was very weird. And then even uh, once Lamar took over, it got even more strange. Cause it was like, Whoa, offense? We looking for more, more than offense now? Uh, and then, I mean, throughout Joe Flacco, like, it, it, was, it was like that. we were just looking forward to that defense. Now, we knew that he was good for some deep balls and whatnot. Joe Flacco, the Toy Smith, that connection that was just so pretty, man. But... A lot of times with Flacco, a lot of times with Kyle Bowler, um, even sometimes with, with Steve McNair, man. But Steve McNair, he did pretty good for us that year. But uh, it's just, it, it's, it's been rough. It's been some, some ups and downs. It's been some uh, heartaches and pains uh, when, it come, when it came to the offense um, throughout the years. But, um, yeah, Ed Reed would be my guy for, uh, for defense. Now, for offense, ooh, this is a good one. I feel like Marciana is just such an easy answer. I feel like Anquan Bolden would be such an easy answer. Um, I would say Derek Mason. Derek Mason. And I feel like, well, he had his prime as a Raven. I don't even think he was really in his prime when he was with the Ravens. But uh, Derek Mason, because he would fit in exactly to what the Ravens are trying to do right now. And that's impl implement some route runners at wide receiver. Derek Mason had great hands. He had great heart. Uh, he put it out there, man. He, I, I, I loved his play. Remember the Cowboys game? I think the the uh, the Cowboys game, their last game in their stadium. Well, uh, oh that game. Oh, I went crazy that game, man. But Derek Mason was playing with like a, a a dislocated shoulder or something like that, and still out there balling, man. But the route running was great. That's why we always say. For wide receivers, you could be as fast as you want to. You could be as tall as you want to. You could be able to jump through the roof. But if you ain't got the route running, none of that's going to matter. So it would be, that would be my guy for offense. Next question came from my boy Jarvo. He said, my brother, Mr. Engraven, my question for you is real simple. Okay, let's see how simple it is. Uh, are you ready for some Ravens football? Yes, I certainly am. Uh, I feel like this is going to be a special season, especially with some key players playing on their last contracts. Oh yeah, you know people show out when it's time to get that money. They show out extra. Anyway, he said, I'm excited to see our rookies as well this season. Oh yeah, we all are, for sure. Uh, how excited are you really about this season? Oh, I'm, I'm very excited about it. I'm very excited about it. I'm excited to see what the Ravens do. I'm excited to see them all just put it on the field and just see how the team after a regular offseason. We saw what they did the last time. My guy Jamel brought out this point. He said we saw what they did the last time they had a full offseason. They went 14 and 2. And then when they didn't have an offseason, they still went 11 and 5. So imagine what this team can do with a full. Anyway, um, he said, uh, what are your expectations for the team? My expectations for the team would be AFC Championship. Now, hopefully they exceed my expectations and blow my expectations out the water. But I, I expect AFC Championship. So that's what uh, I, I hopefully I'm wrong. And they be like, you know, AFC Championship. No, nah, we, we going past that. Hopefully they do. They can. But it just depends on so many different things. And they got some big humps. If they're going to even get to the AFC Championship game, they have some huge hurdles to get over this year. Multiple. Obviously, they would have to win multiple playoff games. Not just one. But execution got to be better. Coaching got to be better. Chiefs. Against the Chiefs, you got to be better. Against against the playoff teams, against the and, and and with the playoff games, you cannot come out slow. 
You can't come out slow and they also have to have a plan B and even a plan C if plan A isn't working. And even if plan A is, y'all get my point. But anyway, those are my expectations. And he said, which rookie can't you wait to see outside of Rashad Bateman and why? Uh, outside of, I would say Adafi away. I would say Adafi away just to see his impact as a run stopper. But that speed as a pass rusher, I'm excited to see him on those third and longs when you where you know it's going to be a passing play. I'm excited to see him out there on that and, and see, OK, what's he getting ready to do? What's getting ready to happen now? What's Adafi getting ready to do? How's he going to look? Because, again, he is that first round draft pick. He's raw. But, hey, he's with the right coaching staff uh, to make him blossom. Uh, and he said, who's your sleeper team this year? Sleeper team, I would say they like kind of like borderline sleeper because they were in the playoffs last year, but then they got out of the playoffs last year and they were right there. They were so close. I would say the Miami Dolphins. Next question came from my boy Howard S. He said, what's up, Engraven? I was just thinking that training camp is going to be here in no time. And this year we'll get preseason games. I think this might be the most exciting preseason in NFL history due to the circumstances of last season with the pandemic and all. Very true. I agree. He said, I saw your questions from subscribers video and I agree. I'm looking forward to seeing the depth players play too. That's how under the radar players shine. What are your thoughts on the importance of this year's preseason? You nailed it already. You, you, you nailed it already. This year's preseason is huge because not having a preseason took away so many opportunities from so many guys last season. But now they're going to get to actually show like, hey, I can play. And they're, they're going to get to show that before the season starts. Because a lot of guys, that's, that's where a lot of guys make the team. Undrafted rookies. Sixth, seventh round picks, sometimes even fifth round picks. They could be borderline. But then a coach may see them in preseason and be like, oh, okay. Oh, he got some. I like him. So this preseason is, is huge, man. It's huge, and we all excited for it. Next question came from my boy Nick T. He said, I ain't graving. It's Nick T here with a quick question. So my wife surprised me with Bears Ravens tickets for our first anniversary of Soldier Field. Ooh, that's what's up, man. My wife, she actually been talking about she wanted to go to that game because her family is from Chicago, and they and it, Chicago's really nice, too. It's a really, really nice city with very, very, very good food. I just hate, hate, hate. It's just so, it's literally windy and the wind makes it like it's so cold there. Like the last time I went there, it was September and it felt like it was like November, December. For me, again, coming from Florida, for me, it was, it was super cold because it was windy. It was like, ooh. But anyway, let's get back to the question. He said, we are from the south side of Chicago. Ooh, okay. Hey, so you, you, you ain't gonna play no games. Well, you from the south side of Chicago. All right, but anyway, he said, I'm a diehard Ravens fan and she's a Bears fan. See, my wife, she used to be a Bears fan because of her family in Chicago. So she used to be a Bears fan before she really understood football. But then we started dating in uh, about 2011. Um, and so she, she was, I was teaching her about football as the season went along. So she was learning it more, understanding it more. And she went through all the heartaches with us, with us in that 2011, 2012 season where the Ravens, they did so. And they had been doing really great for prior seasons but that season they went back to the AFC championship game and was so close you just knew they were going to win it overtime against the Patriots but of course the well it wasn't a drop by Lee Evans it was not a drop why does everybody say it was a drop it wasn't a drop Sterling Moore stripped the ball out a drop is the ball hitting the play in the ball hitting the play in his hands and it dropping a drop is not the ball hitting the play in his hands and the defender stripping it out it, that's not a drop but anyway she was there for that. We were watching her at a sports ball live, and y'all done heard the story plenty of times before. And I just knew Billy Cundiff was going to make it. I just knew it. And when he missed, like, that is the worst as a football fan because you're one of the final four. Your team is one of the final four. And you're so close. And then it's like, okay, you about to kick this field goal, about to go into overtime. Even though Joe Flacco threw a touchdown, but Sterling Moore made a great play. It's like, okay, let's just go to overtime. I know the Ravens about to win in overtime. Cool. Let's just kick the field goal. Let's go. The Ravens had that momentum. Things were going their way. It's like, all right, let's get it. Then Billy kind of missed it. Oh, boy. That was pain. But again, my wife was there through that. So um, we, the, the following year, we got married on November 3rd. The next day, uh, we went to a sports bar to watch the Browns game. The Ravens played the Browns, and they won. 
And then the following week, we uh, we were just driving around and we ended up just flying up the flying up to Maryland. Just decided took took a random trip and ended up going to the Raiders and Ravens game where the Ravens just put all the points on the board against the Raiders. It's like fifty five to like what's the score like fifty five to twelve or thirteen something like that fifty five to something. And it was uh, it was nice. But anyway, let's get back to the question. He said she went all out and got us visitor side tickets near the fifty yard line. Row one. Oh, you married the right one. Row, oh, row one, I just, oh my goodness, row one, oh, you, boy, you, you got one, boy, you sure got one, congrats on that, man, man, I'm, I'm hyped for you now, man, my question for you is, what jersey would you rock with the potential chance of getting autographed, hope to see you there, I remember you saying your wife is from, oh, see, I should have read this before I started talking, he said, hope to see you there, I remember you saying your wife is from Chicago, this may be one of the last years the Bears are in Chicago, oh yeah, because they may be going to the, uh, the, the horse racetrack thing in i think was arlington i think something like that i uh, hope you and the family are doing good and just like the bears are trying to leave chicago i'm out appreciate that nick <laughs> um I, I i just i would say whoever uh whoever your favorite player is man i mean you could just wear whatever jersey you could even what you could do if you just want to be safe and, and you don't want to uh, potentially offend any players or anything well, they ain't gonna get offended they all on the same team uh you could get a custom jersey you could wear a custom jersey and whatever players you could get to sign it after the ravens take care of business against justin fields and them you could get you could just hold the jersey up or you could have on one jersey and have that have your custom jersey in your hand be like oh can you sign this da -da -da -da. and they sign it real quick and then boom so it's whatever number you put on there. Um, if I got a jersey, if I, I need to get a custom jersey myself, but if I did get one, I would, I don't know if you can put two different numbers, like put one number on the front and put one number on the back. Cause I'll put 11 on the front and then three on the back. Cause that's me and my wife's uh, wedding anniversary, November 3rd. Um, but if you could put, yeah, you could put whatever number and put, put your, you and your wife's last name and uh, yeah, man, then get whoever to sign it, get everybody to sign, get as many people to sign it. And then you have all these different autographs all along the numbers and whatnot. So that's that's what I would do. Or uh, but me, I'm for whatever game we do go to this year. Um, I'm gonna probably have a, a either a Lamar eight jersey or a Hollywood five jersey. One of those two. I mean, we got a lot of people from from Broward and from uh, Dade and from Tampa and from Jacksonville and from just from all over Florida, but definitely South Florida. There's a lot of them from South Florida, so it, it'll definitely be one of those for me. But for you, like I say, either custom jersey or just whatever, man, just as, as long as you're getting it signed, because that, that's that's the biggest thing for you, it sounds like, is getting the jersey signed. So I don't even think it even matters which one you wear. Another question also came from my guy Nick T. He said, uh, what do you think has a better chance of happening this year, Lamar winning the MVP again or the Ravens winning the Super Bowl? What are your thoughts? Uh, I would say the Ravens winning the Super Bowl. The reason I say that is because there's a lot of recency bias. This could be good and it could be bad. Lamar Jackson, he just won, just won the MVP two years ago. So I do not see them giving him an MVP again, especially since these narratives about this and that, they continue to fly. I just, I, I don't see them wanting Lamar Jackson to be the NFL's MVP yet another season. So I would say uh, the Ravens have a better chance of winning the Super Bowl, which I wouldn't be mad at. Hey, give the MVP to whoever. I, I don't care. If Ravens win the Super Bowl, I don't care who has MVP. I don't care who got offensive, defensive player. I don't care who got players of the year. I don't care who got rookies. I don't care. I would not care. If Ravens won the Super Bowl, oh, I'm straight, man. Next question came from my boy Brian. He said, what's good, Engraving? Long time watcher. First time sending the question. I got something to get off my chest. Oh, okay. Let's get it off, baby. He said, it feels like the Ravens are the most underrated team in the AFC. Whoa, ho, 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 by who? Well, let, let me see what you're saying. I, I don't feel like they are the most underrated. They can be a little, I, but I don't feel like they're the most underrated at all. But anyway, let's see what you're saying. He said, I know the Browns have a good squad finally with a competent quarterback. But again, Browns, they've been had good squads like every year. They Their rosters are fire every year, man. But anyway. Let's keep going. They have a lot of good to great pieces. But correct me if I'm wrong. Did the Ravens not sweep them last season and have the exact same record as they did? 
They certainly did, my friend. They pulled out that broom that they picked up at Costco and they swept those brownies away. But anyway, he said, I know I'm not crazy, LOL. Matter of fact, I checked pro football stats and Lamar Jackson is 4-1 and one against Baker Mayfield going back to our Week 17 game against the Browns of 2018. Oh, that was a game right there. Oof. How is anyone claiming the Browns are the runaway favorites in the AFC North? This seems like a forced narrative. Now, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen people saying that the Browns are the uh, the runaway favorites to win the AFC North. Now, I, I could see how they would say that based off of the way that last season ended. Of course, when the Steelers played the Browns, Steelers, they whooped up on the Browns. They initially, they, I think the first game they whooped up on them. They were just destroying Baker Mayfield and they were just dogging them boys. The second game... Oh, uh, it was like right before the end of the season. It was right before playoffs. And I believe the Browns beat the Steelers, but the Steelers didn't have a lot of their starters in. Uh, but then in the playoffs, of course, the Browns, they were like, oh, y'all, y'all, uh, y'all ain't want to play y'all starters. OK, y'all playing y'all starters now. And what? So the Browns whooped up on them in, on them in the playoffs. So, and the Steelers, with the Steelers having won the AFC North, I think that's why, if you're hearing that, then some people may be like, oh, the Browns, they win AFC North. But yeah, they haven't, they haven't been able to, 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 to rock with Lamar and them yet. They haven't been able to rock with the Ravens yet. They, they did get them in that 2019 year. They got them then. In the M&T Bank Stadium, but Ravens came right back toward the end of the year. They said, oh, wait a minute. We weren't these Ravens yet. And they went and took care of business. Um, and they scored, I remember that game. It was, they scored like two touchdowns in like two minutes with Mark, Lamar to Mark Andrews. But anyway, Mark Andrews, that's Mark Andrews in a lot of big games. Mark Andrews, be, uh, but against the Browns, Mark Andrews go, woo. I wish we could play the Browns every week. Mark Andrews would be the best tight end in football. Uh, but anyway, he said, when combined with the low-key dissing the Ravens, uh, we've gotten from PFF uh, about the running backs and QB position mostly. The Bucky Brooks clickbait <laughs> and goof troop. He said goof troop reporting. <laughs> It's hard as a Ravens fan not to feel like there's more to this than just football. I was even watching NFL Network recently, and they had a panel on to discuss the most complete rosters in the NFL, and the Browns were number one. They did say the Ravens were likely number two contenders in the North, but come on, if another traditional quarterback had Lamar's win-loss record and touchdown-interception ratio, he would have been heralded. Ooh. So my question is, are the Ravens the most underrated team in the AFC heading into the 2021 season? Thanks, and keep it clean. That is a uh, great question with so many different points. Um, and, and yeah, initially I was like, whoa, most underrated? Nah, nah. But then after reading it, I still don't feel like they would be the most underrated team. But I feel like the word is not even underrated um it's just being a tad being a tad bit slept on a tad bit um well so i guess you could say a little bit underrated but i, I cannot say most underrated I, I can't say that at all uh with the ravens um the thing about them is that v victims of their own success they're victims of their own success the fact that they have been doing so good doing so great in a regular season People are like, okay, we expect them to get 12, 13 wins. Now, this year is a 17-game season, so maybe they may have them at still about, yeah, 12, 13 wins, maybe even 14. We'll see. But the thing about it now is the playoffs. Now, Browns, Browns' roster is stacked, and they, they are an established type of stacked. So I can see when people rate the Browns' roster, not the team, but the actual roster better than the Ravens, I'm like, oh, okay. I, I, I wouldn't see why anybody would get upset about that because while Lamar has been better than Baker Mayfield, um, the only thing that Baker Mayfield has on him is passing yards. Uh, everything else besides that, Lamar got it. But anyway, um, so quarterback position is Lamar, but running back position, you have two established number one running backs, Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. With J.K. Dobbins, he's nice. Gus Edwards is nice, but J.K. Dobbins, he's on the come up. He was a rookie last year. So we expect him to be, like, phenomenal, but he's still got a lot to prove. And he's got to establish that consistency. Again, we expect it, but he's still got to show it. He's still got to deliver. Offensive line. 
Ravens signed Alejandro Villanueva. Uh, they also brought in Kevin Zeitler. Ronnie Stanley should be coming back from injury. Uh, and then the left guard, the yeah, the left guard position. Uh, that's a question mark because uh, I believe Zeitler is expected to play right guard. Uh, the center position, Bradley Bozeman is going back to center. First time playing center in the NFL. So while we expect the Ravens offensive line to be better, it's still question marks there. So, but Browns, you look at Browns offensive line, they had one of the best offensive lines in the league last year. And they're bringing everybody back. So that's why you could put their offensive line roster above the Ravens. Because Ravens offensive line is not proven yet. They have some proven guys on there, but also some unproven guys. So it's a question mark. Then wide receivers. Yeah, they signed Sammy Watkins. He's off injured. Hopefully he stays healthy this year. We know what he's capable of. With Hollywood, we know what he can do. Uh, they drafted Rashad Bateman unproven. He's a rookie. But then you look at Browns. They got Odell Beckham Jr. coming back. We know what he can do already. He's established. Jarvis Landry coming back. We know what he can do already. He's established. You get my point. So, and, and then we, we, we don't have to go through every single player and every single position on the roster. But when you look at the Browns roster, they are stacked. Stacked. So, but as far as the team, they, they've had stacked rosters, like we said. But the Ravens have still been taking care of business. And hopefully they continue to do that. But... Even if the Ravens may be a little bit underrated, even if they are being slept on a bit, that's what we like. That's what we like. And we don't want the Ravens to be like, hey, baby, oh, we expect the Ravens in the Super Bowl, da 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 No. Don't, don't push them too high. Now, there's some stuff where they be disrespecting them now. You know, you know, you know we'll call that out. But um, it's, it's all good. It's all part of the game, man. So Ravens, they got to show up in the playoffs, especially, man. They, of course, got to take care of business regular season, but playoffs is where the biggest question marks lie. So let's see how they do this year and hopefully they can get it done. Shout out to